People have heard of bone marrow transplantation and then there's the Edmonton protocol for islet cell transplantation. But I think that researchers like myself are working on many forms of cell therapy that could potentially treat other diseases such as multiple sclerosis and also cancer. So there is a real need in medicine for developing these cell therapy strategies to treat a number of different diseases. My research is involved in transplanting of insulin producing cells into patients with type 1 diabetes. Patients who have type 1 diabetes require daily insulin injections. So I am a, one of the members of the researchers that developed the Edmonton protocol in 2000 where we were able to transplant patients with insulin producing cells and alleviate them from their daily insulin injections. However, this is still a strategy that still needs improvement to treat many more patients with type 1 diabetes. So my research is to develop new sources of replenishable insulin producing cells as well as developing strategies that we can do this transplant without the need for long-term immunosuppression which sometimes can be harmful to the patients. There are improvements and this facility will help support those improvements. The Alberta Cell Therapy Manufacturing Facility here at the University of Alberta, it's a specialized facility that allows researchers to extend and improve upon new cell therapies. This field is hugely emerging. I mean, this is only in the last five to 10 years that this has really come about. And really in the last two years, cellular therapy is really starting to get to the forefront. And the biggest example of that is uh, antibody therapy. So part of the, what cancers can do is actually hit a natural off switch. So the immune system never actually gets a chance to ramp up. So some of the antibody therapies that are out right now actually are able to turn off the off switch. So it no longer has a way to actually turn off the immune system. And the immune system can then go on. Part of the problem with just that mechanism though is uh, that it, uh, it ignores the other half of what cancer can do. Cancer can hide from the immune system by just basically hiding its face, pretending it's not even there. And so what I'm trying to do is actually to take a patient's immune system cells, retrain them to recognize the hidden face and to attack uh, cancer in that way. If we can do that in a petri dish, then we can actually take those cells that we've trained and put them back into patients. And that's what we're uh, trying to do as well. There's only really four facilities in the United States that actually is capable of doing something like this right now. So having something like this in Edmonton puts us on par with a lot of world-class centers in the States. Without this facility, we would have to go elsewhere. And that would typically be very expensive and sometimes would even prevent us from translating our research into patients. The economic significance of a facility like this is huge. To be able to have a facility like this actually allows us to be able to not only do those studies, but be able to eventually roll them out for actual standard clinical use. So in fact, actually, we could actually create our own companies even to be able to use a facility like this and then be able to roll it out to the rest of the world even. I anticipate over the next 10 to 15 years that these novel ideas that are being tested in the petri dish in a researcher's lab will be done in this facility so that they can actually be used for patients for treating various diseases. When we look at the impact of what we can do based on the technology that we're developing, um, it's really going to have not just for Albertans but for the entire world. Science is advancing in cell therapy, and because it's advancing, we require this facility to translate those advancements into patients. Without this, it would not be able to happen.